All right, let's go ahead and get started with session seven. Uh, again, just a reminder where this is room B. And uh, our next talk is entitled Innovative OER for Spanish ELL Writers. And um, our speakers, Su Susana Rodriguez from Excelsior College and Lori Aldrich also from Excelsior College. So you guys have the floor, take it away. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you and hello to everyone here. Um, we are thrilled to be a part of this weekend's conference, Lori and I. Um, as Carl mentioned, we both work at Excelsior College, which is a fully online, fully accredited um, college that provides degrees in nursing, business, technology, and um, criminal justice, as well as some a variety of liberal, liberal arts degrees. We also just um, included a new um, cybersecurity program in our, in our technology field, but we're fully online and we um, have students from all over the world. Many of our students are in the middle of, of their lives and they're going back to school to change careers or to take a shift, um, but our students are fully online. So OER is something we are very fond of um, and something that we feel very passionate about. And we also at Excelsior have something for the writing world that we are really proud of. We have, I'm gonna share my screen in a minute, but we have um, an OER called the Excelsior OWL. OWL for, stands for Online Writing Lab. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm gonna showcase it in a minute. And we just recently created a program called Adelante for uh, students who are trying to re-enter or enter for the first time the higher education world who speak Spanish, whose aim is to finish their degree in English. So these students come to us, they, if they are entering and they need to take a few semesters worth of courses in both Spanish and English in order to get where they wanna be, they can do that. If they wanna hit the ground running and take their courses in English, they can do that too. But most of the students that we expect to be admitting in the, into this new program at Excelsior will be mostly fluent in Spanish and wanting to conduct their academic lives in Spanish. And so one of the things that we did in anticipation of this program is we had our OWL website translated into Spanish. And it was a very, it's a large undertaking. Lori and I have both been working on it together because as you'll see in a minute, our website offers um, both text and video, as well as some H5P interactive um, lessons in which the students can answer questions and get a score. And there's been a lot of hands-on translating that we've had to do to make sure that the translation machine effectively did, as because as you all know, machines don't always translate very well. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the right one. Hang on one second. And before I do, and as I do so, I'm going to introduce um, both me and Lori in a in a more thorough way than I have done. I just want to make sure I'm remembering to share sound as I do this. Um, so everyone, tell me by nodding your head, can you see our Excelsior Owl online writing lab? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, Carl. So before I jump in, um, our plan is to talk for about 15 or 20 minutes. And we hope to have, we, we, when we present on the OWL, which only recently became a Spanish resource for folks, we often have lots of questions. So we want to save at least 10 minutes at the end for questions. But before I jump in and explain a little bit more about the OWL, I want to talk about how the OWL came to be. So our team currently consists of three people. So I'm the director of the writing center. It's a virtual writing center. It's not an actual place that people can come like in many colleges, brick and mortar colleges, but it's a virtual writing center and we offer writing tu tutoring. And we also have this OWL resource, this online resource that, that as you'll see in a minute is um, very soup to nuts in its, in its offering. Um, my background, I've taught writing in a variety of ways for the last 30 years or so. Um, I started as a high school English, English teacher. I spent much of my career being a professional editor, um, living on a teaching salary. It's not easy in this country, so I found ways to augment that. And it always ended up back with teaching people how to write. And that's my passion. 
Um, I've added a couple of sections to the OWL since joining Excelsior about two years ago. And Lori is my partner on the OWL. She is the magic behind what makes the website function and live and breathe. Um, if a link is broken, Lori knows how to fix it. If she can't fix it, she knows who to contact, which is Mark, the person below her. Um, but she's really the person that makes sure she keeps tabs on the OWL. She makes sure it's functioning the way it should. As you all know, having OER resources sometimes requires a lot of background support, and she really gets the credit for providing all of that. Um, if we add a new page, I write the content, but we always talk together because Lori always also has an eye for accessibility in mind. So she always, she corrects me if I write a sentence that says something like, for more information on this, click here. And she'll tell me, well, you can't say click here because that's not good for a reader, for somebody who can't actually read themselves. So she's got a really lovely perspective on accessibility. And then Mark, who is the, our current, he's sort of the IT guru. We like to call him the IT guru at Excelsior. He can fix when the websites go down, he's there to make sure they go back up. And in the background, he's there to make sure they stay alive and functioning um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So going back to our homepage for the OWL, um, the OWL in English offers writing resources for students in everything from soup to nuts, as I've already said. So if you need help in just brushing up on your grammar, you can find that under Grammar Essentials. If you're a graduate student and you're at a new school and they require MLA and your former school required the Chicago manual style, you can come here and find how to figure out how to format your paper properly so that you meet all of the requirements. Um, if you are getting a degree in something that isn't a traditional liberal, liberal arts topic and you need support in figuring out how to do that, you can come to our writing in the discipline section and figure out about how to write in specific subjects we hope to add more subjects to this section, but right now we offer a, a menu option of business, health sciences, professions, and also nursing, all of which are degree programs at our college. So we're already proud of what we offer um, students. And by the way, we have people, we have instructors and students literally across the globe who use this OER, and we're really proud of it. But with the advent of Adelante and uh, our admission of some students into the program, who are Spanish speakers now and who need help and support now in Spanish. We have this new feature up here in the upper right-hand corner. You can switch from the English version of the OWL over to Spanish just by clicking right here. And this is the thing we're here mainly to talk about today. So one of the things that makes this website distinctive and unique is that it really offers, it offers all of the same resources that it offers writers in English who speak in English and can write in English fluently already, but in Spanish. But it's all geared toward learning how to write in English. So as many of you know, I'm seeing some names on the um, attendee list. Those of you who write and speak Spanish, especially academic Spanish, you know that the conventions are somewhat different and the things to pay attention to in terms of grammar are very different. Um, one of the things that we have at Excelsior is all incoming students have to take a course called the Cornerstone course. And the Cornerstone course sort of takes, meets students where they are. And, and the aim of the course is to both teach them about Excelsior and how things work and function at Excelsior, but also kind of give them a really a kind of boots on the ground remediation in academic writing and academic higher, higher education skills that you need for um, your college career. And where this cornerstone points to in most of its courses are these two sections. In English, this is called the writing refresher, the grammar refresher, and the APA refresher. Because at Excelsior, we use across the board, we use the APA manual for style. Um, so, one of the things that Lori and I have worked really hard on in this section is some of what makes our, our OER kind of fun for students is we have, we use a lot of H5P presentations. Um, taking a minute to get to, to open up this next page. But these, what you see down here, all of these um, 
This is in-text citations, references, formatting, and style, but in Spanish. So all of these H5Ps have been translated into Spanish. So if you're a student going back to school and your native language is Spanish, but you have to figure out how to format your paper according to APA in English, you can come here. And right here is the English page. Seventh edition is the most current edition of APA. But if you click over here, it brings you to the same presentation, but in Spanish. We also try to make a point of talking about how not all conventions are going to be the same in English as they are in Spanish, but this is a, an example of the kind of um, interactive presentation that students who write in English can go through, and now we've updated it so that students who write in Spanish can go through. This is our index page. It talks about all the different kinds of needs a person would have, how to cite, how to punctuate, why and where to cite, um, how to cite a personal communication like an email, all of the things can be found here. And if you speak Spanish, you don't have to worry about looking at the English H5P. You can just come to this presentation. We also have questions that precede the following lesson um, that just ask things like, why or how would you use the Latin phrase at all when you're writing, when you have a, a, an in-text citation? Um, these, all of these questions are also interactive, so you choose an answer. This bar down here um, means check your answer. Oh, got it wrong. Going to try again. And there's always an explanation for why the answer is wrong or why the answer is, is right. You can click try again. I'll choose another one. Oh, I got it right. This one doesn't explain why it's right, but we got it right because we punctuated properly. We put the comma in the right place. We put the, question, the quotation marks in the right place and the period in the right place. And it goes through all of these different, the various different layers of how to do in-text citations um, according to APA. Um, there are also presentations on references, the references page, how to format it. As you all know, it's very, it's very, uh, you have to pay attention to all the rules and some some instructors are stickier than others but if you get it wrong it can affect your grades so these things are all really important um before i showcase the grammar refresher which Lori wants to talk about a little bit i also want to show you something that we have if i go back to well actually i'm going to stay on the spanish site one of the things that makes our site kind of fun that we're really excited about going back to apa formatting if you go, some of the pages have videos. So one example of that is if I click on in-text citations and APA, it brings me back to the page. This, this video is actually in English, but what we've added is closed captioning in Spanish. So when I press play, which I'm gonna do in a second, you'll see the experience that the student will have, in which case he or she is hearing the video in English while the slides are being shown, but seeing on the screen the closed captioning in Spanish, which we feel is a good instructional tool so that the person who's trying to learn English can hear the native English, but if they need the support, the Spanish closed captioning is below. And so just if you don't mind, I'm just gonna play a couple of seconds of this so you can see how, how it looks and how it feels. This short video will focus on the basic setup for in-text citations in APA format. It is first helpful to get an idea about why in-text citations are important and when they should be used. In APA, you should use citations in parentheses within the text to let your audience know when you have borrowed information and where that information has come from. Most students know to cite direct quotes but it is important to remember you must also include in-text citations for summarized and paraphrased information. You are not just citing words, you are citing ideas. For more information about what kinds of information must be cited within your text, be sure to review the Avoiding Plagiarism tutorial in the Excelsior OWL. So this is just a sort of sampling of the kind of resources that the Spanish site offers. Um, 
we're really proud of being able to provide both of, like the video content where the student can hear the English because for the Adelante program at Excelsior, our goal was to get students functioning in their writing and in their speaking of English fluently. But even someone who isn't in our program, who is still trying to learn how to format or how to write or speak or all of the above in Spanish can come here and these, these sorts of um, interactive H5P resources will be helpful in supporting that effort. Going back to and the- Before you yes. go back, may I um, yes. interject? Of course. Something also that I think that is fabulous that we've done um, is we have a transcription of the video on all oh. of our video pages um, so that the students can read through it. And what I love too that we've done is that sometimes there are things on the screen um, in the H5Ps and the videos that uh, is not necessarily auditory, but it's important for the understanding. And so we've tried to incorporate that as well into the transcription. So um, I just thought that was a, a nice piece of information to know that they're there. Absolutely. And thank you for that, Lori, because going back to what I was saying about your skills, Lori, in terms of always having accessibility in mind, some people do better by being able to read some people do better by being able to hear, and some people do better by being able to see. And we kind of have all three in these kinds of in these videos and these resources. So thank you for um, interjecting that. I'm going to turn it over to you in a second, actually, Lori. So going back to what we were talking about about um, our cornerstone course and the very first course that the Adelante program will take in Spanish includes links to our grammar refresher as well as our APA refresher. And we are in the process of getting all of the H5Ps translated. As some of you probably can um, empathize with, it's hard to talk about super esoteric concepts of grammar um, in, an, in a smooth and comprehensible way when you're using a translation machine. So Lori and I have been going through and reading everything and making sure the translations make sense. And the way we talk about grammar in English is a little bit different from the way one talks about grammar in Spanish. So for example, our, our presentation on apostrophes, they don't, you don't really see apostrophes in Spanish, but we use them a lot in English in different situations. So we translated our presentation, our H5P into Spanish. And um, we make a point of saying this refresher or this lesson will teach you about using apostrophes in English. And bear with us, we're going to walk you through a lot of different things. And Lori, I'm going to pass the torch to you. I, I will be happy to drive and I will click on any of the Brilliant. slides that you want. But you take it away and tell, tell us about what you love about these kinds of presentations. Okay, so one of the things before we even click off this slide that I love is that with H5P and, and forgive me that I get a little excited with technical things. And H5P lets you build these things with the shell, meaning uh, in English, we'll have English words like check. And in Spanish, you'll have, if you hover over like the print button or the forward button, um, all of them are in Spanish. And I love that. And H5P actually lets you do that with 42 different languages. Um, we uh, love this because it helps the user to feel more comfortable. And I love it because um, I think that user, uh, the interaction with the user is super important for me. Um, if you were to go to, uh, and what I also love is that H5Ps, we have a Creative Commons license. So as long as you cite, you can use this and embed this in your course or wherever you want to use it. And so, you know, it's there and I love that. Um, also, uh, I think that Nan, actually, I, I must give her the credit for making this so that it's so individualized for the Spanish, to learn, Spanish learner. Um, because as Nan was saying, it's so different um, for apostrophes in Spanish, uh, as in they don't use them, and in English. So if you want to go through uh, to the question, uh, if you could, thanks. Um, what we've done is all of the questions that we've built, and this is a slideshow presentation. In this type, we have the questions are all in English because that's what the student, that's what we're teaching, right? How to use apostrophes in English. 
but we want to make sure that it's not a difficult thing for the, we want them to be able to focus on the apostrophes, not necessarily of what the sentence means. So we have the Spanish translation afterwards. And then the questions are in Spanish and then all of the feedback that they get are also in Spanish. Hopefully uh, this helps the learner to be able to focus on the content and not necessarily on the having to comprehend what we're talking about, but can focus on the apostrophes themselves in this. Um, then also, since we're on this slide, um, as Nan said, I'm, I'm big into accessibility. So one of the other things that we've made sure to do is that as we were building this, all of the pictures, it's really important to have alt text and all of the images, you can't see it now because she's hovering over it. But if you were to be using a screen reader, all of the alt text is in Spanish for our Spanish H5Ps. Um, and I think that's important because if, if you are a Spanish learner but needed to use a screen reader or you needed something else, you would want, you would hope that a Spanish presentation would be, uh, have Spanish assistance. And so we've tried to think about all of the different ways and all of the different types of learners and be very focused and detail oriented on trying to make sure that we have a lot of these things covered uh, for our users. Um, even to the point, I think if you were to go to uh, mm -hmm. um, the last slide, actually right after the last slide, the final, right after that, next one. The last one is a, um, gives you the score that you've taken. So see, you can see that she did the first question. She has the total there. And then all of the slide titles and the question titles are in um, Spanish. That way, hopefully that'll be an easier trigger for help to help them remember which the question, what the questions were and what they did. Um, so I believe the answer to that last question I just saw is yes, it can be embedded into Canvas. Um, so. Oh, I'm not seeing the chat. Oh, there's a lot of chat. Sorry. I just happened to see that one, so. Uh, yes, it can, yes, it can be embedded into Canvas. You just have to give us a very brief Creative Commons 4.0 attribution, and then you can use, you can embed videos, you can embed whole pages. One thing I didn't mention, at the beginning is um, in our, um, I think it's, I forget if it's in educator resources, you can create a custom thing called an outlet where if you're an instructor of writing and you have ELL students who speak Spanish, you can pull different pages from different parts of our website into your own, what we call a custom outlet. And then once you have that, you can use that in your courses or if you prefer, you can embed, you can just embed specific pages wherever you like. Um, this is a totally, as, as the OER definition would, would describe, it's free. And um, you can find it on the Creative Commons website, um, but I, I can also happily send it. It's the Creative Commons 4.0 at the bottom here. If you go to the website, it will take you and it will, there's just a sentence you have to write using certain words wording um, and then you've, you've given us attribution and you can you can um, reproduce or use whatever we have you can even take what we have and rewrite it that's how free the the license is Lori am I missing anything in that regard nope no okay. it's super open super easy to use um, we've had people all over the world write to us and and double check with us is it okay yes yes it's okay um, just make sure you use attribution and and we, we're super excited when people like to use our content. Yes, and I'm seeing another we are we do love it when people use it. And I'm seeing Nayeli's comment. We worked really hard and just so you know in advance, not every page has been proofread yet. So I go in and I proofread and I try to make sure that the translations actually work and that especially when they're translating idiomatic English they're not doing it word for word, but they're capturing the meaning of whatever the idiom may have been. Um, if you ever find an error, feel free to, to email us and tell us you didn't do such a good job on that one. We may have just not gotten to it yet. Um, yes, we are always open to suggestions. Alejandro 
trust me, there are, we know there are typos, we know there are mistakes. Um, I'm trying to scroll through. I'm not sure the meaning of the question for what level do you use the resource, but I can say it's, a, I think it's fair to say that this can be used by high school classroom in, um, ESL instructors all through higher ed graduate school or um, bachelor's degree and graduate school level. We have, because we only had 30 minutes, we didn't have time to showcase every single page, but we have the writing process in its most basic form from just figuring out what you're gonna write about, brainstorming activities, figuring out what voice to write in, figuring out who your audience is. We have a whole section on research and all the various different stages of research. All the pages have been translated into Spanish. Um, again, we've talked about, we have citation and documentation, the three main academic style guides. Um, we have a whole section on rhetorical styles and why we need to know about rhetorical styles in writing. We have a very extensive section on um, argumentative and critical thinking, translated into Spanish. Um, we have a section on writing on doing online writing, whether it be social media or a blog or an online presentation. We have pages on all of those. Um, we have a basic, we have a more thorough description of, of grammar and how grammar works in English, which as we all know is a, a tricky beast. Um, how to avoid plagiarism, we have a section there. Writing, um, academic Writing 101, so this takes students who are just back to the classroom in college and they need a refresher on how do I get my mind out of texting my best friend and back into academic writing. Um, we have a section that I showed on, on the English page, writing in the discipline, and then back to where we are here. Um, and I see a lot of messages have come through. Uh, let's see. Yes, I was wondering, so we have about five more minutes. If we okay. could open it up to, um, people seem to want to uh, interact with you. Great. And I, um, and probably just tell you how wonderful this is. And thank you so much for opening it up to the rest of us. Um, I think, uh, Yeli, do you want to uh, tell them what you, your thought, what you're thinking about in, in terms of Spanish translation? I do. Like I'm, I'm, I'm my, I, like you blow my mind. Like it's really, really nice work that you're doing. I'm so happy that you're opening up. And so many times I teach heritage speakers Spanish mm -hmm. translation mm -hmm. into Spanish, and. Um, I always thought that it was necessary to have this kind of resource for Spanish, and uh, I see a lot of potential. I, I I honestly do think that this is very very helpful because I always, you know, my rubrics always, I include some points for students who really respect the citation style and um, you know mm -hmm. not the most of the work, but I always valued you know that the students are able. To have that kind of attention to detail. So I, I really applaud and commend you for this. It's really great. And um, it also makes me think of so many, and you know, questions that I think of when I'm teaching for Spanish speakers, because I'm not trying to, you know, when I teach, I'm not trying to reinforce their English. I'm trying to reinforce their Spanish. So while well, I recognize this is an excellent bridging resource for them to produce academic writing in Spanish, I think that it would be also great to help them, you know, reinforce the Spanish skills in academic writing in Spanish. So uh, I don't know what, I, I think it is complicated because as you said in your presentation, the conventions are very different, but do you see any potential for going into that direction and adapting this material? for students who also want to reinforce their academic writing in Spanish? That's an excellent question. We've, we've been having lots and lots of conversations at Excelsior about two other things we really want to try to do in that perfect world where we have an extra day in the work week. One of the things that's on the docket for our next project for the OWL is to create a section that is specific to, Sp specific to Spanish speak speaking students who are doing both Spanish and English writing that supports both. Um, in order to be able to 
translate the H5Ps that I just showed you, I bought the APA guide in Spanish so I could make sure I knew how academic academicians in Spanish actually say really weird things like hanging indent or um, other esoteric academic language that I might not be able to translate off the top of my head. Um, we do want to build that. We, we were in major talks with the rest of the college about being able to try to support that. Although, as you can probably also understand, we're really focusing right now on our Adelante program for our students who are coming in trying to, to learn English. But um, I hear you. And um, I want you to know that, yes, the, the answer is yes, but we're not sure when or how long it will take to get there. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see you, Nayeli. I find that your picture came up to the top now. We only have a minute left. Um, I'm wondering if anybody else has constructive feedback or questions. There is one question in the chat about uh, how you created the interactive slides. Lori, do you want to answer if, that one? Yes, if I may. So we have um, a H5P. If you if you were in the English site, I'm also well, in the Spanish site too, but um, in the top right section, there is a thing about H5P, what H5P is and what it does. And we have that integrated with um, the OWL. And these are all H5Ps. So in H5P, you can build the slide presentations. You can put videos. You can build just interactions with just questions, like a question set. Um, it seems brilliant. Um, you can build um, sliders that are uh, show before and after pictures or flashcards or there's so many things that you can do with H5P and it's brilliant and it just integrates. So I build uh, all of the content that you saw in H5P. That's mm -hmm. the name of yeah. what I use. Well, um, that takes us <clears throat> We are right on time. I want to thank both of the speakers today. This is the OWL is a really impressive website. I, lo I love how you've thought about uh, accessibility issues and of course the design issues. It looks um, very easy to navigate. And I, I, as the other speakers have said, I think or commented, um, I think that people in, in heritage Spanish because it's, it's uh, aiming at a higher level. They're gonna be very interested in this. So I see this as um, really a winner for a lot of different people who are um, gonna be very happy to find out about this. So we'll do our best to spread the word. Thank you guys so much. And. Thank you.